Hi, I got invited to a Halloween party this year for the first time in a long while. And I don't really like to go in a no effort costume, but I didn't have time to go in a high, to make a high effort costume either. So after some brainstorming, my girlfriend and I came up with the idea to go as men in black. Yeah, they have women now as well. Because it's a low effort, relatively low effort costume where we have most of the parts already lying about in our home. So it would be relatively simple to make. But how do we make sure that people get what we're dressed as? How do we make sure that we don't just look like we're going to prom or something? Well, we make neuralizers, the trademark mind erasing weapon from the movies. Here's what I came up with. We make neuralizers, the trademark mind erasing weapon from the movies. Here's what I came up with. I find that while simple costume builds like these are flourishing on the internet, they're often just a tad too complicated for the average maker to replicate. Therefore, when I made this, my focus was on achieving maximum simplicity and convenience while still making it interesting mechanically and electrically. Um, so therefore, I compromised a whole lot when it came to the actual resemblance to the movie prop. But honestly, who truly remembers what they look like anyway? Now you don't. The idea is that this costume can be replicated with parts that most makers or electronics nerds have lying around their house. As long as you have access to a 3D printer, most of the other parts should be relatively easy to get at your local hardware store or similar. Well, there you have it. I've already made this first piece, which I'm fairly happy with how it turned out. Now let's grab some sandpaper and make this one even better. Now, let's fill this thing with some electronics. So, okay, what have I done in the previous version? What's, what I have here is a switch that charges a capacitor and then discharges the capacitor if I do it the other way. So you can do like this, flash, 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 flash. And how that looks on a breadboard is really, really simple. It's, it's just a nine volt battery, a couple of uh, switches. These now represent this toggle action. One charges, one discharges, and that's really all there is to it. The 10 watt LED that I have here can be replaced with something simpler. If you only have regular LEDs, you can use that. They will give you a flash. They will not be as bright. This one is really, really bright. And if I press both buttons at the same time, they will draw current directly from the battery. And now it's really, really bright. I can't look directly at it. I'm using a 330 microfarad capacitor. It also works for other kind of LEDs. I mean, we can actually replace this. That should be the same circuit. Yeah, you can still see the flash. You can use whatever you have available. That's the point here. 
You can change out the, the LED. If you use a normal LED, you're gonna have to be more careful with the current limiting resistor. When I was using this one, I didn't really use a current limiting resistor. It has a 12 volt voltage drop, and this one only provides nine volts, so it can't get the current that it needs to burn up, which is, of course, what you're trying to prevent with a current limiting resistor. This one, however, will burn up if you don't have the current lim limiting resistor because it runs at two volts, uh, we provide nine, and it will only need 200, uh, I'm sorry, 20 milliamps of current. Well, okay. You can change out the capacitor with something lower, something higher, whatever you have available. I've, only, uh, I've also put in a discharge uh, resistor here that will discharge the capacitor slowly. High ohm resistor, don't remember the exact value, doesn't really matter. The diode doesn't need to be there either, it's just to prevent the capacitor from shoving current back into the battery because it's not meant to be charged. Um, not really necessary either, it's more like a safety precaution that as well. So there you have it. You can change out literally every, everything in here with whatever you want. A uh, smaller battery that fits uh, nicer. Then you can also scale down the CAD model. And you can change out the switches. These now you can, you can actually use two like this. Then you can also use the, uh, the whole thing as a flashlight. That's impossible now. You don't get a constant light out of this one. It will flash and that's the only thing it will do. If you have this uh, two button system then you can hold both and you will have uh, current directly from the battery you can change out this uh, with other types of switches like uh, I'm using this one now which has t uh, three states a zero state in middle that doesn't do anything one that charges the capacitor and one that discharges the capacitor you can use one like this that has only two states one that constantly charges and one that constantly discharges then you have to remove the bleed, um, bleed limiting uh, resistor in here. Same for this one, two states will work. You can use whatever you have available and that's the point here. The simplicity and convenience is what I've designed this circuit for. So you can download the CAD files. You can just throw in one of these which it's designed for or you can use the other file that I will also provide where there are no holes and you can drill your own holes or you can um, alter the, the CAD model so that you um, get the correct holes that you want. Same goes for the flash. You don't have to use this 10 watt thing but I will provide the, the files for that and I will also provide a flat one where you can make your own holes to fit whatever you want to fit in there. Now let's get soldering.
So that's the electronics done. Now all we need to do is to do the final assembly, glue a little bit and uh, paint. So let's start here. This print's almost done. The electronics work and it's filed down and real silky silky smooth but we've made a blundering CAD. It can't be closed because of these screws that I forgot to put into the 3D model and it can't really be fixed because we've already printed number two and it has the same flaw. So how do we fix that then? Well, we do something reversible and hope for the best. But does the lid close? <laughs> so everything fits and it closes, everything's all good, but it doesn't go up by itself, so we need a spring in here. But where in the home can we find a spring? In a pen. Let's get this in here. That's it, a last minute, medium effort costume prop for Halloween with high flexibility. What we did was that we 3D printed a model, we filled it with a plastic filler that's made for car bumpers, we sanded it and repeated that process until we were uh, happy with the finish. Then we gave it a black base coat and continued, continued with a silver color. Uh, this color is not quite as chrome as we would have liked it to be, but it's good enough for our purposes. Then we finished it off with 
a clear coat in the end. It could have been made better, especially using a filler putty to remove the seams. Hot glue is not a very good filler because it's really hard to sand, but we're happy with how it turned out. After all, it's a very last minute Halloween costume build. Actually, today is October 28th, and depending on how much time I need editing, video is barely gonna be out in time. So if anyone actually finishes one of these before uh, Halloween party this weekend, then let us know because that would, would have been insanely impressive. And if not, there's always next year or whatever other costume party that you're going to. We will try to publish an Instructable about the build. There we will focus more on the electronics, on the schematics, and we'll show all the variants that we talked about earlier in the video. The 3D files will be available on Thingiverse, but the Instructable is probably not gonna be out before the weekend. So bear with us there. Finally, we think we're gonna be really excited to hear that the first version of Fetch is done. We're just keeping it, the looks a, a secret a little bit longer because we're finishing up the final release video and we are... Uh, oh. <laughs> Hi there, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The next video is gonna be about Fetch and it's gonna be the final release video. It's gonna be really cool, so you don't wanna miss it. Until then, happy